Tonight, former President Mahama begs labor unions for a honeymoon if he wins 2024 elections. As he says, the economy is broke and he will need space and time to set things right. And I'll plead with the teachers' unions, Nat and Nagrat and Utag and Tewu and all of them. I know all of you are clamoring for allowances, increase in your allowances and so on and so forth. Let me caution you. This country is broke. And so we would beg you that when we come into office, give us a bit of a honeymoon. But will Labour grant him the time and space he needs? We'll hear from them. This is Top Story with Evans Mensah. And Top Story is always brought to you by Vodafone. It is early January, but already the campaign for the December polls is taking off in earnest, with the NDC flag bearer already talking about the economic conditions he is expecting to confront if he wins the general elections on December 7th. Now, John Mahama has today been begging labor unions to give him what he calls a bait of a honeymoon if he wins the December polls. He says the economy is broke and labor unions must hold on to the demand for better working conditions if, if, if indeed he wins the 2020 uh, for elections and goes about attempting to fix the economy. Speaking at a Compass Connect event at Hohoi as part of the Building Ghana tour, the NDC flag bearer admitted he has been measured in his promises this time round because of the economic challenges. He lays out his case. But let me beforehand tell you that our country's economic situation is in a very dire state. The MPP has brought Ghana's economy to the lowest ebb that has ever been seen in our history. We are broke. We are indebted. There is hardship in the land. There is no money in the system. People do not have disposable incomes. Pensioners' monies have been taken. Bondholders' monies have been taken. And so it's created a very critical situation for us. And therefore, we are very measured in the promises that we make because we know that we're going to come and inherit a very difficult situation. And so we would urge that when we come into office, you understand the mess that we have inherited. We have the men and women who can work to turn it around. But we will all have to understand the situation and be patient as government works to put the economy back on its feet. And so while you are making demands, if government comes, help us with this, help us with that, yes, we will, but initially the first thing we have to do is to bring the economy back to life. And I know that as soon as we come, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to hold a national conference, a national economic dialogue, and we're going to bring all stakeholders together. We'll open the books for you to see the mess that the NPP has left for all of us and what we have to do to be able to bring it back. My brothers and sisters, when NDC was leaving office, the total public debt was 120 billion CDs. Total from Kufour's time at Mills, Rawlings' time, Ukrumah's time, we owed only 120 billion. Today we owe almost 600 billion. I just want you to understand the situation in which we are. In 2016, when I was leaving office, no, let me say 7th January 2017, when I was leaving office, if we took all the money Ghana owed, and all of us Ghanaians, we agreed that let's share the debt and everybody should go his way. We all take our portmanteaus and go. We'll share the debt and we'll pay and then we'll go our way. 
all of us would have paid about 4,000 CDs. Everybody, including a newborn baby, 4,000 CDs. Today, if we decide to share that 600 billion amongst 30 million people, all of us, even including a newborn baby, will pay almost 20,000 CDs. That's how much you owe. 20,000 CDs is what you will be required to pay. And so you can understand the extent to which the economy has been destroyed. But like I said, NDC has the men and women to be able to bring it back to life. Well, my colleague Nanaya Ajima is traveling with him and joins me right now. Nanaya Ajima, we just had him there lay out the economic condition he is expecting to confront in 2025 if he wins. However, he is isolating a few labor unions and cautioning them about what they can demand if he wins. Exactly, Ivan. See, he, um, specifically mentioned labor unions on the teacher front. That is UTAG, POTAG, and other um, labor unions. This is because already he had, these, some of these labor unions had the opportunity to speak at the event. That was before the former president or the flag bearer of the NDC took over the microphone to address them. And they spoke about conditions that will make them able to discharge their duties. So after that, that was when the former president spoke and they rather spoke about some of these um, concerns, that is some of the uh, money and others that they will need to be able to work well. And already we know that they are on the, t the, the discussion table with government to get government um, heed to these concerns. So that is why the former president specifically asked them to give him what he terms an animal if he is able to win power. Let's listen to what he said at Hohoi. And I'll plead with the teachers' unions, NAT and Nagrat and Utag and Tewu and all of them. And all of you are clamoring for allowances, increase in your allowances and so on and so forth. Let me caution you that in 2025, inshallah, after we take over, we will show you the books and the finances of this country. And you realize, and you realize the harm that the MPP administration has done to Ghana's economy. This country is broke. And so we would beg you that when we come into office, give us a bit of a honeymoon. Let's put things in place so that we can bring the economy back on its feet. And when we have done that, we can uh, accede to your demands again. And that's why I'm being very measured in the promises that I make. Because we all know the crisis in which this country has been plunged. Nana, so some of these unions were there when they heard him say this. Exactly. But um, looking at the faces of the people who represented these unions, it looks like they were not too happy about uh, what he said. But there are others who think that what he is saying is right because... Um, per the indicators that he had put up, it looks like um, the country is not in a good shape to heed to the demands of these labor groups. So the people were divided over um, the, the, the time or the animal he asked for if he should be able to assume power in, the, uh, in 2025. Um, Nana, thank you very much. And Nana has been traveling uh, with the former president on this uh, on this tour. I want to bring in Felix Kwachifusu, who speaks uh, for the former president's office. He joins us on the telephone line right now. Felix, thanks for your time here on Top Story. Yeah, Ivan, uh, nice, nice to be here. Um, he wants to be president. He's been president before. I mean, the, he knows that this is a pretty difficult position to hold. The kitchen is almost always very hot. Why is he asking for a bit of a honeymoon? If the kitchen is too hot, why, why does he want to go back in there? Well, that is the whole reason why you need an experienced hand. Someone who is familiar with the terrain and will hit the ground running and know what to do the very day that he gets into office. Also, we live in times where because of the 
deliberate falsehoods and outside lies that the lies of Baumia and Nana Kufado and the MPP told the electorate, which they have failed woefully to uphold in office. It has created a bit of skepticism and doubt about the sincerity of politicians who seek the mandate of the people. So the times call for utmost candor, sincerity, and honesty about the true state of affairs and what can practically be done in light of the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Everybody knows that the MPP has destroyed the Ghanaian economy. And one of the ways that they have done it is imprudence, complete mismanagement, extravagance, living way beyond our means, and plain theft of national resources. Now, all these have to be avoided if the economy is going to be brought back on track. And the way to do it is first to have an appreciation of the true state of affairs and also ensure that the economy is managed in a way that allows us to live within our means so that we do not go back into the distress that Baumia and Akufuado's incompetence has plunged us in. So when the former president speaks about the need for candor, the need for all of us to appreciate the state of affairs, he is drawing attention to realities that we all know and live by. Yeah, so that, that, that reality yeah. he knows. He knows about that yeah. reality. So mm -hmm. why is he then asking labor unions to give him time that they should he use the word caution? He, he's cautioning them that but, all the lack of things that they're asking for, then, they should hold on. Eva, when you go into a ditch, the first thing you do is to come out of that ditch and then retrace your steps so that you do not fall back into the ditch. So when President Obama takes over in January 2025, the first order of business will be to restore economic stability and prudence to the management of our economy. To do that, we have to live within our needs. And it is important that as he does that, he carries the nation along. It is the reason why he has made a firm commitment that he is going to set a personal example and cut down significantly on government expenditure, especially the one relating to expenditure incurred on those who govern. So he has, for instance, said that there will be a drastic reduction in the number of appointees in order that we don't spend too much on them. And even those who have the opportunity to work within those limited numbers are going to have perks like S. Gracia completely curtailed, and uh, some allowances and some freebies that they were getting from government will all be removed. Once he does that, he would have set the tone for all of us to appreciate that there is a new direction, there is a change in the way that we handle the finances of the country. And I'm certain that once the people of Ghana know that the leadership is making the requisite cuts in the profligate way that leaders have lived over the years, then there will be basis to call on the citizens way to join the effort to salvage our economy. So a time will come when the demands of labor and other sections of society would have to be met. But initially, there will be the need for consolidation and the restoration of stability, which will require some of these sacrifices. But that sacrifice is not only going to be the portion of those who are governed. Those who govern will take the lead and live frugally, live within our means, avoid the ostentation and extravagance and profligacy of the Baumea and Akufuado administration. So that we'll be able to save enough resources to engage in efficient and optimal expenditure. That means the needs of the people, but in a manner that does not throw the economy out of gear. So, I'm so sure he, that everybody out there would appreciate this point. He, he, talk about, he talks about a bit of a honeymoon. How long is he expecting to get from Labour? And he's very specific. He mentions the Labour unions by name. And, and my correspondent explains that they had spoken before he spoke and they laid out what they want in 2025. That's why he cautioned them that don't expect too much. And he says, I want a bit of a honeymoon. How much was he, ex he expecting to get? How much well, you have know, essentially answered the question that you, you asked me. The Labour unions had made specific representations and he apprised them of the true state of affairs. I'm sure that when we eventually take over, we will discover that things are much worse than we have been made to believe. So, so how, much, how much honeymoon is time that, is he asking for then? 
specifically? Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, honeymoon is necessarily the, 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 the appropriate word. Well, but, that but he uses the word. No, he, but it certainly would have to just, be. just to be clear, he uses the word himself. He says a bit of a honeymoon. And that everybody will understand that given the state of the economy, whichever government is in place after 2025 January, will require some bit of space to put a house in order, some bit of space to ensure that stability is restored and all that. So it is not something that's going to uh, continue ad infinitum. It, it, and time it, will come when government will be in a position to meet the demands of labor. In so far as it fits within the national budget. But as to the fact that the economy is in complete doldrums and we will meet a very difficult situation in 2025. There's no dispute about it. Not even the MPP can deny that. And I'm sure all Ghanaians listening to me this evening would agree with the former president that that is precisely what has to be done. So, so stay, 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 stay with me. Yeah. I want to bring in Professor of Political Science at the University of Ghana, Professor Ranford Jampo, who is also the president of the University Teachers Association of Ghana. He's one of the unions the, president, the former president mentions by name uh, of, the, of the University of Ghana branch. Prof, thanks for your time here on Top Story. So the, president is, the former president is very clear that if he wins uh, the election, he's expecting to meet a tough economic condition. And that uh, he's, uh, he's begging. He's first of all cautions you know, all these teacher unions and says he begs for a bit of a, a honeymoon. Will he get a honeymoon? I think the right word there to use is to appeal and not to say you are cautioning. And um, I, I think that should be understood um, right from the word go. The right word there should be to appeal to um, labor and not to use the word caution. Now, it must be noted that in the upcoming 2024 elections, Labour would vote with hunger and anger. Labour would vote with hunger and anger. Now, anybody who benefits from the anger and hunger vote of Labour must necessarily do something to mitigate the hunger and anger of labor no matter how small it may be given the fact that people are going to be voting based on hunger and anger you should be seen to do something no matter how little it may be to assuage or to tackle um, their challenge and then also uh, beyond that it is up to whoever emerges victorious in the 2024 elections to demonstrate and lead by example. And leading by example here will be key in determining how the leader or how the one who will win would elicit the support and cooperation from labor. And leading by example, leading by example here, I'm referring or I'm talking about the fact that you wouldn't uh, ask labor, you wouldn't be seen or be heard to be talking, telling labor to tighten um, their belt whilst you and your appointees will be living in opulence as we keep seeing now. And so how many ministers the government that is going to be formed would, would encapsulate? How, what is going to be the size of the government? Are they going to be selling vehicles that may be created to them by the outgoing administration uh, cheaply to outgoing ministers and procure expensive and new vehicles? Are they going to be moving out of their own apartments, renting them and charging dollars and go into government apartments to be the, and would insist that all furniture, pictures and fittings should be sold cheaply to those who were previously inhabiting them, and then they would demand and insist that new furnishings should be done for them. Are they going to contribute or play or, yes, continue with the practice of refetching um, water with baskets? I mean, the mo if, if some of these things are done, then you would not be in the right books of labor. You would not get the support from labor um, when you say we should all tighten our belts. 
And so much depends on key who would win and how the person will be able to govern. This demonstrate how broke we are is also demonstrated in how those who win the elections conduct themselves. And so if you are broke, let it be seen. You don't want to see a president driving a huge convoy um, wasting the taxpayers' money with, with, um, by, um, uh, with fuel that are, are drawn free of charge. You don't want to see a government that has a size of a one, over 100 or 120. You don't want to see a government that is living in opulence and still telling us that um, we should tighten our belt. If you do that, then you don't get support from from the people, uh, from Labour and others that you are appealing. Well, but what, um, what, what he's support. asking for, what he's asking for is a, a bit of a honeymoon. If he does these things in the first few months, he gets a honeymoon? Uh, yes, like I said, number one is that we, the Labour would vote based on hunger and anger. And so when you come in, uh, whoever emerges victorious must be prepared to at least do something sm- I'm telling you, if the kind of opulence that the politician of today enjoys or lives in is sacrificed a little, is reduced a little, you can meet labor at least halfway through their demands. And so whoever emerges victorious, if that leader or that person decides that they are not going to go the route of the present day leaders, then um, there will be enough to be saved to help meet labor, um, you know, halfway through their demands. Beyond that, let the austerity measures be implemented such that it affects everybody from the presidency to the daily rated employee of the land. Let everybody feel it. If, if we all are made to go through the austerity measures, then when the leader says, tighten your belt, and we see that the leader has tightened um, his belt, then we would all follow suit. But if you, if you don't do that, then it becomes difficult for you to garner support from labor. I mean, this whole concept of a honeymoon, does anybody deserve a honeymoon in 2025, considering where we are as a country? Well, um, honeymoon simply means, well, don't bother us, give us a peace of mind um, to, to govern for some time, and later we may um, address your your concerns and all that. But I'm saying that um, if um, whoever emerges victorious decides not to go the route that the current people are going, then they will be able to meet um, some demands such that uh, once those um, demands, even if we are met halfway through, once those demands are met, then you can have some respite that you may describe as some temporary honeymoon. I mean, Felix, you, you've heard the, uh, he's a president of Utah, UG. He, he's told you the conditions, the conditions that will trigger them, you know, agreeing to give you the space that you've just asked for, the former president asked for. Is it part of your plan? Well, but uh, before Professor Jampu came online, I said the very thing that he has, he has asked for. So I'm even surprised that you're asking me the question again. I agree with everything you have said. Fortunately, the former president has committed to all of these things. He has spoken about cancelling El Garcia, which is one of the demands that Labour has consistently made. Uh, he has spoken about not buying any new vehicles. No government official will be allowed to purchase any vehicle that he or she has used. That practice will be discontinued. The former president has committed that government will no longer provide fuel and utilities for ministers and other categories of uh, appointees. And that those freebies will be cancelled beyond their salaries, nothing else will come. So all these commitments have been made already by President Mama because he appreciates that leadership must set the tone. Leadership must govern by example and indicate that if we have to go through further times because of the complete destruction of the economy by Baumia and his horse in government, then leadership is prepared to go through the same sacrifice that citizens may be called upon to make. So there's no ambiguity at all about the former or president's intentions to govern in a manner that is satisfactory to the generality of our people. But again, I see that you tend to overemphasize this on the movement. President is not saying that people should not hold government to accountable or demand what is due them. He has only said 
that because of the state of the economy, definitely the government will require a bit of space to put things in order and then be in a position to meet the demands, what labor generally deserves, even if halfway. But before he does that, he will show clearly that we are making a clean break from the profligacy and ostentation and avarice and corruption and waste of this government. You would definitely not see 120 ministers in the government. He has said that he will have around 50 ministers. He has said, for instance, that the situation where we have over 1,000 people loitering about the presidency will come to an end, and he will have no such numbers in government. He has said that the many amorphous uh, duplicating agencies that this government has set up, that is guzzling large amounts of uh, resources will be brought to an end and that some institutions will be merged into existing institutions so that we have a streamlined and lean government that has not become a burden onto the citizenry because of the way that resources are spent to do very, very, very little. He has made all these commitments so there can be no doubt about his intention to turn this situation around and ensure that our economy is managed in a way that is prudent and that we live within our means. It is a failure or we should have but this government to ensure that we live within our means that has been at the heart of all the economic problems we face. So any government replacing it would have to commit to do differently. And that is precisely what Mr. Mama has committed to do and will do. Mm. Well, that's uh, Felix Kwachi Fusu there. He speaks for the former president. Earlier, he had the uh, president of UTAC, uh, University of Ghana branch, uh, Professor Ransford Jampo, who's also a professor of political science, by the way. I want to hear from you. Uh, does any president deserve a, a honeymoon uh, in 2025, uh, regardless of who wins? And as you've heard the former president, he's, uh, he's mentioned the labor unions by name. He says he begs for that time, that space. Would you, as a uh, member of the of the public who will be voting, uh, what do you make of his uh, or, or what he says? Is there? I beg, please give me the the honeymoon that I that I need to set things straight. Would you agree to give him that if indeed he wins? Um, let me hear from you. Zero five five one 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 nine nine seven. I'll share details with the rest of the world pretty shortly. With your views also on news night.